when I started working as a music supervisor, I was a college dropout doing absolutely nothing with my life. Uh, it came to be that a girl who I first, I had a big crush on when I first met, uh, wound up introducing me to someone else uh, who got me my job and brought me in uh, on what they called uh, the writer's room, which was sort of like a focus group where they had young adults and teenagers work on scripts and talk about slang and their own stories from high school. I just asked about music straight away. Uh, I wanted to intern or just send playlists or help the guy. You know, I was a big fan of Skins UK. Uh, definitely like formative material for me. And uh, and he asked me to make him a playlist, the creator, Brian Elsley. Uh, next day asked me to quit my day job. After Skin sort of failed, I'll say, uh, I started working mainly as a DJ, throwing parties and just kind of like getting to know the Brooklyn scene. And a couple years later, the assistant editor of Skins hit me up and was like, hey, I'm working on this show. It goes to air in three weeks. It's not really working out with their music guy. Can you come in and play them some music? And uh, that was Broad City. It's funny because after I finished Skins, like I sort of took the money and started a, a small practice studio, uh, like recording space. And then when I was DJing with my crew back then, we were always talking about doing like a, a compilation of different producers. Uh, and then after Broad City, I had all these instrumental beats from producer friends of mine who I had worked with on the show and as DJs that they had no plans with, you know, 30 second loops, 60 second loops, uh, but had that sort of like island sound that I had been going for, just way, way better. Uh, so kind of those three ideas of my solo record and a, and a very collaborative compilation and these kind of new beats sort of just triangulated into what is now Scooter Island. I have, I have a Zooter scooter that I've been riding uh, since high school and two years ago during CMJ I stored it in the band closet of a show uh, where all the like guitars and stuff were going and then as soon as my friend's set was finished it was gone and that sucked and knowing that I had turned a bunch of people on to scooters and everyone kind of knew me as the kid riding a scooter, this is even before I think we started calling the project Scooter Island, it's just like I was always that guy. So I emailed the company. Uh, and they sent me a very short email response back. We don't do sponsorships. And not only did I kind of like make a make an earnest case for myself, but I'd also asked them a completely unrelated question that they just didn't answer. So I thought that was kind of rude as someone who had kind of been championing their company for so many years. Uh, needless to say, 12 emails later, they sent me a free scooter. Yeah. So uh, now I've got that one. I actually just sent them the video yesterday, uh, made true of my promise that I would feature their product. So, you know, I'm not on their website or anything. I, I, I kind of call it like a begrudging sponsorship, uh, but yes, I did not pay for that ride. <laughs>